As the midterm elections fast approach, some media outlets in the U.S. are warning of voter suppression, even accusing certain states of having racist voting laws. Joining us tonight with his take is Hans von Spakovsky, senior legal, legal fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Hans, great to be with you. All right, let's get right to it. Among the headlines this week, a claim that Florida voting laws are the, quote, modern-day version of Jim Crow. Where is this coming from? Uh, that is just totally untrue and, frankly, is an insult to uh, the Americans who suffered from the real Jim Crow in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, that is a claim being made by those who are against common sense uh, election reforms. They seem to think that if they can use that kind of inflammatory rhetoric, they can use it to stop common sense reforms like requiring an ID to vote, which the American people overwhelmingly support. And Hans, can you tell us a little bit about the voting laws in Florida? Well, Florida has laws similar to those of Georgia. You know, you need an ID to vote. Uh, they are doing a good job of trying to clean up their uh, voter rolls and make sure that it's only people who are currently eligible and living in the state. And any claim that that is somehow voter suppression, listen, we're seeing record turnout in primary elections uh, this year in places like Florida and Georgia. Uh, and we're, we're expected to see uh, uh, record turnout in the general election. That shows you that there's no voter suppression going on. Yeah, and speaking of Georgia, uh, cries of right. unfair voting laws there. Critics are saying the laws there are an attack on absentee voting. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the early numbers there in Georgia. Right. Look, the Secretary of State just released uh, the number of people who have voted early or through absentee balloting. Uh, close to a million voters have already voted. Again, that is an unprecedented number. Uh, that's only slightly less than the number of people who had voted uh, at this time in the presidential election. Listen, you know, uh, turnout is generally much lower in a congressional election than in a presidential election, and yet Georgia has turnout numbers approaching presidential election year numbers. And this in a state that Joe Biden said had Jim Crow voting laws in place. It just shows, again, that is totally wrong. Let's talk about voter ID right now. I know one of the concerns sure. is that, you know, requirements to show a voter ID, some say are unfair to minority voters. What do you say to that, yeah. Hans? No, we know that's not true. Why? Because uh, voter ID laws have been in place in various states since the 2008 election. So we have many years of turnout data. That turnout data shows that in states that have put in ID laws, not only has turnout not gone down, it in fact has gone up. A again, that, that claim is just not true. And by the way, in Georgia, remember, uh, Stacey Abrams is one of the individuals has, that has been making that claim just two weeks ago. Her lawsuit that she filed making that claim was thrown out by a federal judge, uh, in fact, a federal judge appointed by Barack Obama. All right. We have about a minute left or so, but I want to get to this. Uh, former presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, uh, she made some news yesterday. She is preemptively questioning the legitimacy of the 2024 elections and saying that right wing extremists, well, they have a plan in work, she says. Uh, Hans, what more do you know about this and where is this coming from? She's just making that up. There, there's no there's no right wing plan to uh, keep people from voting. And in fact, it is irresponsible for her to be making claims like that. Those are the kind of untrue, uh, inflammatory claims that might keep people from voting, it might scare them off, might make them say, well, there's no point in voting because my vote won't count. But the point is, she has not one scintilla of evidence to support that claim. Hans, great speaking with you today. Thank you so much for your insights, as always. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.